walk us or slide us or wall run us through Brink. Game director Paul Wedgwood. Good to see you again, Paul. Good to see you. How are you? Good. It's been a little while since we first heard of Brink, so uh, bring us up to speed. This is a, a futuristic squad-based shooter. Right, but, but somebody tripped and spilled a vial of parkour into the first-person shooter mixture. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's, 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 at its oh, heart, no, it's a shooter. So it's about on. shooting people, it's about visceral combat, and that's really important. But what we wanted to do was take those kind of frustrating artificial constraints out of shooters. I mean, you know, back as far as the Quake days, you know, back in the day when we played years ago, yeah. you'd run up to a uh, table and you jump up and you just can't reach it. Or you've got a wall, it's and just this high. About it. yeah. You still can't climb over it. So what we're doing with Brink is we're removing all that stuff. We've got a new system called SMART. It stands for uh, Smooth Movement Across Random Terrain. But what does and that actually mean? Well, basically, if I run towards something like a, a table mm -hmm. and I hit the button, I'm going to vault over it and slide across the top. Oh, you're not going to set it for dinner for friends. You're yeah. actually going to use it in an action context. Yes. Got it. Yeah, and hopefully shoot at the same time. <laughs> right. I can run towards the same table and look below it and slide underneath. I can run along and jump and vault up a wall or mantle over the top of something, but it's not an autopilot, it's not taking over control from you, so there's no canned animations. You know, if you're aiming and shooting and stuff like that, it doesn't interfere with that, so it's okay, about so movement I can, and shooting. I can decide to vault over something or run somewhere while blasting away. Yeah, exactly, and the really weird thing is that when we go back and play our past shooters, like the enemy territory games that we made in the past, right. it's really frustrating now because you just can't do the stuff that you can do in Brink. You find yourself going back to the old games, mashing buttons, expecting to do some crazy double yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, there's that little space the you want to crawl under you right. can't do and so on. But let's touch on the class-based combat because right. I, I'm a huge fan of playing a role on a team or a squad and, right. and, and trying to facilitate that. What are the, what are the classes here and, and, and who are we fighting and why? Well, you see, the, the idea behind the game is that you take on a combat role that suits your preferred playing style. So if you think you've got a cracking aim, you could play soldier on the front line, pulling off like awesome mid-air headshots, right. planting heavy explosive charges, blowing through big gates, that kind of thing. But if that isn't really your thing, you could play a support role, say like Engineer, and in fact never fire a shot, just put down defense turrets, landmines, shoot up the base, buff your teammates' weapons, and still level up and still advance your game. But the idea behind Brink, really, is that you're fighting for the Ark. The Ark is this immense artificial floating city uh, built at sea as part of a contemporary green vision just off the coast of San Francisco. Sounds loving. Towed out into the middle of the Pacific, and then boom, it just loses contact with the rest of the world. No ships, no planes, total radio silence. 20, 20 years later, they're really running out of resources, so you get to fight as either the resistance, fighting on behalf of the refugees, or the security. So there's two complete story campaigns in the game. Very cool. And what I love is that there is that single-player campaign. We talk about squad-based shooters, even with all the elements you have. Right. It, it, you immediately go, oh, okay, an online game, I'm going to be warring with clans. But you guys are focused on making sure that the single-player game is, is a full, complete, coherent experience right. that, that rewards you also in online. Sure. Well, you know, we have this reputation. We've been making shooters for 10 years. We've had like 15 million downloads of enemy territory, but those are hardcore multiplayer shooters, and we love really compelling single-player narratives, you know? So we wanted to create a game that really blurred the lines between offline and online gaming, and in Brink, irrespective of whether you play single-player, co-op with up to seven of your friends, or in full multiplayer versus mode, you advance your same in-game character basically persistently. You get these cool outfits that represent what a badass you've become to your friends. You can get in and modify your weapons and put scopes on and, and red dot sights and silencers and muzzle brakes and front grips and magazine upgrades. And it's not two separate characters. I can, no. I can take my single player character, bring that badass guy into the online world exactly. and then destroy friends there. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, when, now, when you talk about going to these levels like single player, you said you like a narrative. Is it, all right, you're in this level now, kill everybody? Or is there an actual story that we're playing through? To no, get there's, to that there's an absolute story. So you start out with a squad. We use full performance captured cinematics. So we've been in the studio with actors, you know, covered in all the little dots, recording their facial animation, their voices, and everything they say. You didn't even they're, need the dots for the faces. You just wanted to embarrass them. <laughs> yeah. all over, right? A big orchestral soundtrack and a real story arc, Love basically it. telling you the, the viewpoint from the resistance or the security through two complete campaigns. But when you're in that mission, you'll have a series of objectives that your squad needs to get done. So we have an AI mission system. It doesn't matter what combat role you're playing, it takes into account the abilities and upgrades you've got, where you are on the battlefield, what your squad mates are doing, states of the objectives, and gives you a bunch of cool stuff to do. And it's always different. So you're not like, you know, in a lot of shooters, you're just on a mine cart, going down the same route, enemies pop up in front of you, right. you shoot the I same die, guys, I go back if you die, it's the same again. again. Yeah. It's nothing like that. So you're completely free, you have freedom of movement, the freedom to play the combat role that you want to play, that suits how you want to play, the freedom to modify your weapons that suit your preferred playing 
style, and then the freedom really to just go anywhere you like in that mission and choose different tactics. Paul, with all the experience you guys had, I absolutely trust you implicitly when you say you've thought about every aspect of this. So <laughs> thank you so much for showing off, Brink, Paul. Thank you for we having me. It. It. You guys, that's, that's Brink. When can we get it? Real quick. Uh, spring 2011. Spring of 2011.